Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to our videos where we're going through the best of 2022. Now, I, if you've watched already today, we posted our top 10 games of the year, my favorite games. And that's never enough for me. So many amazing games come out every year. So every year I also do my number 11 through 20, 10 more great games. And that's what these are. These are 10 games that honestly, if my top 10 were all obliterated from the earth, and these were my top 10, I would be very, very satisfied. So here we go. We're going to go from 20 to 11. Number 20 is Trekking Through History. Now, I have unfortunately never played any of the trekking games, Trekking the National Parks, Trekking the World, but I did play Trekking Through History, and wow, was I surprised. First of all, I love the theme. I love this idea of going through history. The artwork and everything is great, but the concept of taking a card, collecting a resource in that card, putting these resources on a, another card to score points off it, but then also trying to put the dates in order and you're trying to do all this stuff and it's just one selection. It's, uh, I'll pick one of these cards. That's it. Not a hard choice, but the repercussions of that choice are very interesting and you get to do some cool things. It's, it's fast. It's, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour, it, but it feels like a very fulfilling game. Very much, very cool game, trekking through history. Number 19 is Fall of the Mountain King. Uh, another game I really enjoy. This is a prequel to Hall of the Mountain King, but it's different, and in my opinion, it's better. First of all, there's the game itself, in which you're putting these cards out in a bit of a display. As you put these cards out, then you use that display to take actions over the course of the game in a really unique way. The game itself is kind of an area control, where you're putting your little trolls all over the board. You are trying to bid on getting these cool trolls that give you special powers. All this uh, comes together in just a really neat entertaining area control thing that I have a lot of fun with. Number 18 is Sniper Elite, the board game. I never played the video game. I'm not a big fan of shooter games normally, but man, Sniper Elite, the board game. It's a one versus all where one person is a sniper and everyone else is trying to find that person, Scotland Yard style. But this one does it in a really good way to the point where I think this is my favorite of that genre. Um, just hunting down that person. I've played both ways. It's really fun to try to figure out where the sniper is. It's really fun to be the sniper. Really cool game. Number 17, Wonderland's War. Yeah, it was such a good year. When this is my number 17, you know that the year was fantastic because Wonderland's War, a big grandiose game that in, has two games in it. One is moving around this middle, the ratchet system where you can move as far as you want forward, but you can't go back on this table collecting cards that give you upgrades and things. And then the second one, bag pulling and area control. It's basically all my favorite mechanisms thrown into one game with good theme and good components. I like the concept a lot. It's a lot of fun. Wonderland's War. Number 16 is My Father's Work. My Father's Work, this game about being the son or grandson or great-grandson of a mad scientist and or granddaughter of a mad scientist. And this uses an app. There's so many different ways. A really strong theme. It's a long game. And honestly, I think it's best with two or three. But there's so many cool options in the game. It's a simple worker placement. But the theme carries you through as you make choices that affect the future of the game. I like it a lot. That is my father's work. Number 15 is Cat in a Box, which is one of the best trick-taking games I've played since, well, The Crew. Cat in a Box is a game in which all the cards are black, but you say what color they are. This is a red four. This is a blue three. But as you say that, no one else can play that number in that color again. And then there's a little bit of area control. That's the game. You're trying not to bust by having a car, an unplayable card. It's a neat concept. Like I said, it's very simple in many ways, but it feels like a classic game as soon as it came out. Fantastic game, Cat in a Box. Number 14 is Woodcraft. Woodcraft is uh, a game from Delicious Games, Vladimir Suchi, uh, where the co-designer, they did uh, this game in which you are building things out of wood, and the wood is dice, and you're taking these dice, and you're gluing the dice together, and you're manipulating the dice, and you're picking actions on a wheel, and there's a lot of me mechanical things, but I think the theme actually comes out, and there's so many ways to manipulate the dice in this game that I just really had a lot of fun with it. So that's my number 14, Woodcraft. Number 13 is Return to Dark Tower. This reprint from Restoration Games, a giant cooperative game. I was very suspicious because it looked big, it looked complicated. And it is big, but it's not as complicated. You just choose what you're going to do. 
and you press a button on the app, it tells you where to throw a skull in the tower or whatever. Things happen. New stuff moves. The monsters move. You fight monsters. That I love the combat system. I like the, the, the difficulty of the game. It's difficult, but not overly difficult. I like the way the, the game's theme. I like the stupid sound effects that the, that the tower makes. It just all comes together in a very entertaining fashion. Number 12 is Planet Unknown. Polyamino games, there was almost too many of them, frankly. But now this one feels like it's just a really cool one. As you spin this rondelle in the middle of the table, the spinning Lazy Susan that the game comes with, and then you pick pieces out. Everyone picks them out at the same time. They build them. You move up tracks. Uh, you especially want to play this asymmetrical because everyone has different special abilities. As you move up the tracks, you're getting points or you're able to move these little rovers around to get rid of meteorites. There's just really cool stuff all throughout this. It is one of my favorite polyomino games ever made. So much fun. Planet Unknown. And then number 11, just missing the top 10, is ISS Vanguard. ISS Vanguard from Awakened Realms is such a great story. I mean, you are flying this big spaceship, the Vanguard. You are looking for aliens. You are flying from planet to planet, dropping landing teams on the planet. The landing teams go out and find stuff and come back. And you do all of this. Half of the game is going on a planet, going around, rolling dice, doing things. The other half, the half I enjoy even more, is the ship half, going through the book and upgrading weapon systems and doing things like that. So much fun, and it comes together in a crescendo of maybe a little bit too long, which is probably why I missed the top 10. But so much cool stuff going on. I just have so much fun with it. ISS Vanguard. So there you go. Like I said, those are 10 games that I'd be proud to have as the top 10 of a year. Fortunately, there's 10 other games which you can check out on our top 10 games of the year. Anyway, those are 10 more great games from 2022. I'm Tom Vassell. Thanks for watching.